Boom, what's going on everyone? It is Steve Larson. Today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about talent. I've spent the last four years learning from the most brilliant marketers today. And now I've left my nine to five to take the plunge and build my million dollar business. The real question is, how will I do it without VC funding or debt, completely from scratch? This podcast is here to give you the answer. Join me and follow along as I learn, apply, and share marketing strategies to grow my online business using only today's best internet sales funnels. My name is Steve Larson, and welcome to Sales Funnel Radio. What's up? Hey, I'm excited for uh, this episode today. Actually, I've been really excited about it. Um, when I go through and I start thinking about different episodes, what I do is actually write down a whole bunch of different ideas. And funny enough, a lot of them start uh, combining. And um, and so I've combined, this one's gonna be like three different ones. I just wanna say it real fast though, okay, okay what it really is. Um, I was mowing the lawn a bit ago, and uh, uh, some people have said like, don't be the, you should never mow your own lawn, you should never fold your own laundry, you should never, and I, I get what they're saying, but for me, that's the time when I am listening to a lot of podcasts, I'm listening to books, I'm listening to audio stuff, most of the time. Sometimes I listen to music and chill out, right? Uh, depends what's been going on. But, um, so this particular time though, uh, this was only like, I don't know, maybe six weeks ago? I mean, maybe? Uh, it wasn't that long ago, and, um, I was, I was mowing the lawn and I was thinking, I was thinking a lot about what this guy was saying. I don't remember what exactly I was listening to, but I remember the idea came in, which is the important part. And, and I realized, I remember I stopped and I was like, oh my gosh, I am where I am because of sheer talent, not positioning. Isn't that interesting? I am where I am because of sheer talent, not because of positioning. I was like, that is really fascinating. And that might sound like I'm, I'm showboating a little bit, but I'm a good funnel builder, okay? I'm really good at building offers. And um, what I realized is that I'm, I've done fantastic jobs at positioning products, positioning a business, but not positioning me, right? And that's the thing that I've been seeking the most uh, this, this year, actually, since I left ClickFunnels. I've been trying to figure out the best place to position myself in the ecosystem that I'm in, right? And that's just as important as your talent itself, right? I've been thinking about this like crazy and it's, it's been the biggest question. Um, I was at a mastermind and I asked the question, I'm, like, I'm trying to figure out like what I do to serve the market and, and they misunderstood what I was saying. I'm not trying to figure out what I do to serve the market. I know what that is. I've been trying to figure out the best place to position myself in it, right? And the best place to go and sit inside of it. Um, uh, recently, it's actually last week, um, as of recording this anyway, <laughs> I batch my content, right? I, uh, <laughs> I drink my own Kool-Aid, certainly batch my content, okay? But uh, last week, I had the incredible opportunity to go and uh, do some consulting for Trey Llewellyn, right? So super cool, guys, I got to go, and this is like super nuts for me, you guys. I was going out and, and listening to Trey Llewellyn's stuff like way before ever working for Russell or being at ClickFunnels. I mean, so to, to go full circle and then be invited to go in and consult on webinars like that was it was, it was such an incredible honor. Uh, we were at the Dream 100 event, and um, uh, uh, Trey was. This is gonna sound like I'm showboating, but this is me trying to position myself. Okay, uh, um, Trey was told that I'm the best at webinars, which is super nice. Uh, it was incredibly nice of him. And uh, anyway, I I um, so he came straight to me, literally right there in the room, and said, "Can I get you to come look at my webinar?" I said, "Sure," and. Um, and I flew out there and I went to his house and the whole way there, I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you know? And I'm watching the current webinar like crazy. It was actually for his girlfriend, Jennifer. Uh, she was awesome. And uh, she, right, and, and I was going in and, and watching this webinar, watching the webinar, watching the webinar. And, and um, you know, when you spend that much time in a craft, it's really easy to see where a ball might be being dropped. And uh, that was no different here. And I immediately saw what the issue was. And um, it was cool to be able to go in and, and do my consulting thing, right? And when I do consulting for somebody, like um, I did it for an insurance company a little while ago. It was like 12 hours straight, okay? Some people need that. Some people don't need as much as that, right? Trey is obviously, Trey Llewellyn's obviously a rock star already. Um, um, there was just some finer points and as far as a webinar gets delivered that uh, was really, really cool to be able to go in and help him and, uh, and, help, and help what they were doing. And it was only six hours, right? And it's still a long time, right? And it's just me straight at a whiteboard, like teaching and pulling things out of them into certain frameworks that I know sell well. And uh, it was really interesting. And it was cool because afterwards, uh, it was very honoring. And, and this is, you know, I'm just, if anyone's like, Steven, you're showboating. Okay, whatever, okay? I'm here to, I, I wanna share with you guys the lessons I'm learning along the journey. That's part of this podcast. That's, that's me, okay? So I'm documenting the journey right now, okay? So this is me documenting. 
He said while we were, uh, he, he and, and his girlfriend uh, took me back to their house and uh, we, we grabbed pizza and we hung out around this fire pit in their backyard. Beautiful house. Holy crap. Nice house. And, uh, you know, you'd expect that, obviously. Uh, and uh, and it, was, it was crazy. Super nice house. Holy gosh. <laughs> anyway, so I, I, we were sitting there and, and he said, you know what's interesting? So I'm trying to teach you guys just the lessons I've been learning along the way because I got something specific I'm going for, right? Now, now think, think in terms of what I had just said before, right? I, I am where I am because of sheer talent and not positioning, okay? And so we're sitting there around the fireplace in the backyard and he, he, he says, dude, you know what's interesting about what you do? There is literally not a business in this world that does not need what you do. This whole offer creation thing that you do, it's ridiculous. I didn't know that that's what you did. This is, that, that was amazing. That was amazing. And I was like, thanks, dude. And I was like, that, that, uh, that means a lot. And so I, I brought up the topic. I said, the thing I've been focusing on, the thing I've been trying to figure out is which vehicle delivers what I do the best to the market, right? Because you guys know I can get a little bit techno, technical on these podcast episodes, all right? This is just my free stuff, right? The real stuff that I do, I, you know, I, I tell pretty much everything, but I, I can't tell some things on a podcast, you know? I can't tell some things. In fact, there's a lot I can't tell, right? And it's part of the reason why, why I, I'm, I'm doing this episode, okay? I'm gonna share with you guys what the plan is moving forward. Um, I, was, uh, I went to this mastermind one time, this was years ago, and I went to this mastermind, and I was sitting in the audience, and I was looking at all the people that were going on stage, and I was watching them. And this is not to judge anybody, but, but this is years ago. I don't want anybody to think like, was he talking about me? Okay, but I sat there, and I was looking at the people on stage, again, years ago, and, and I watched as these people stood up and I realized that guy has no idea why he's making money, right? Or the next person would get up and go, that lady has literally no clue on why her customers follow her, huh? That, you know what I mean? And, and we all see, each other, see that in each other's businesses. That's one of the benefits of a mastermind, right? You go to those things so that you can have other people who are also experienced in the same realm-ish come in and show you like, hey, what if you tried this and this and this, right? The, the masterminds don't work if people bring pride into it. Well, uh, of course I knew that, right? You know, that doesn't work that way, right? Uh, with, with Trey, he and I were teaching each other, right? If we both played the pride game, neither one of us would have learned from each other. And that's what was cool about it, um, right? And what's fascinating is I started realizing like, my gosh, like uh, the funnel building game, I, I set up to, uh, to try and be the best at it. Am I? Of course not. I don't know. I'm, I'm not, okay? I built a lot of them, okay? But, but what's fascinating, is, and remember, remember uh, so I was mowing the lawn and I realized, oh my gosh, I am where I am because of talent, not because of positioning. And then I was looking and I'm remembering back to that mastermind, holy crap, a lot of these people are where they are because of positioning, not talent. And I was like, whoa, right? Like, I gotta get more serious on where I'm positioning myself, right? And some of you guys might be laughing at that, but like, it, it's, I've always just had the mindset, look, provide sickening value, right? Be, be incredibly valuable, the money follows. And that's so true. That's how I've run everything in my business. So what I've been doing the past, especially the last like week, okay? What I've been doing is I've been designing out, it was maybe like three months ago, I first started actually writing it out and I have it written out on my whiteboard right now, right over there, okay? My actual value ladder. And it's the value ladder that I am building. It's the value ladder that I'm going for, okay? Now, what I'm doing is I am not just funnel hacking somebody's product. I'm not just funnel hacking somebody's market. I'm funnel hacking somebody's business, right? And if a business is just a series of systems, right? I gotta funnel hack the business itself also, right? Meaning how do they fulfill on what they've promised? And so what I've been doing is I've been going around and if you look at this, and then some of you guys might be like, well, does Steven, this is, a, I've seen that before in the past, you know, and, and, I, and I get that. But if you look, like the most successful e-com businesses that are out there have a very similar business model, right? The products are what's different. The message is what's different, but the business model is very similar, right? Um, uh, supplement, the business model of a supplement business, the funnel, right? The business part of it, the marketing of it, the messaging of it, the offer of it they're very similar, right? You're not just funnel hacking a product. You're not just funnel hacking a message, but the business itself, the systems, how you actually fulfill on it, how you support it, right? Those are all very similar as well. And so I was thinking through like which, and that's really what's been going through my head. What model, and I've been very cognizant of this question for the last like, I don't know, like probably four or five months now. I was like, which model fulfills what I do best for a market? 
And so what I've been doing is going through and I've been figuring out like what that is and I've been drawing it, okay? And, and uh, I've been drawing the value ladder. Now, way back in the day when I first learned what a value ladder was, I started teaching it to other people because the concept is amazing and it was far more effective than these 30 page business plans I was supposed to write for these professors, right? Um, or, or real businesses that I was asking for money for, right? I've done that, right? Sucks, I much prefer a value ladder. The issue that I've noticed when I get like, right, there's a guy, uh, when I was teaching on stage one day and I was teaching about value ladders, you're right, and I was helping the, anyway, this guy stands up and he goes, well, I've drawn this value ladder and I already know what, I know what this product is gonna be on this step and I know what this product is gonna be on this step. I don't know what this product is gonna be on this step. And I said, well, I don't think you need to know what that is yet, right? A lot of your markets can help you define what that is. And he's like, but I just can't start my business until I have a complete full value ladder. I was like, man, that's such garbage, okay? That's not true. The issue, right, value ladders are amazing, they're incredible, but they also can be uh, this huge hindrance when people put so much stock into them, right? And they take no thought or no uh, uh, input from their market at all. They take no input, right? That's when value ladders become a crippling event, okay? So I always start a value ladder off by building in the middle of the value ladder, right? Mid-tier products, right? Then I usually, typically, I like to go up. I like to go to the expensive side. And then after that, then I create the downside, okay? Now, or at the very bottom of the value, the, the cheap stuff, okay? The cheap stuff for me, I always create it last. Um, that's, usually, that's usually how I do it, okay? So you have to understand, like, what I've been doing is, is some people have been asking me, like, Steven, so what have you really been doing for the last while since you left ClickFunnels, okay? Running my other business, okay, which has been doing fantastic. We're putting a dollar in ads, we get two dollars back out. And it's been awesome, okay? We've, anyway, so it's been so cool. Um, first of all, been running that business, been building the value ladder products and funnels uh, for their respective places. I've been doing a lot of that stuff. But what I've also really been doing though is, is starting to see and look where I should position me, not just my business, in the ecosystem of the funnel world, right? What would be the stupidest thing for me to go do right now? Uh, try to be the funnel guy, right? And Russell's the funnel guy. He popularized that entire concept. Why would I ever try to be the funnel guy? I'm not gonna be the funnel guy. That's dumb, even though I built a bunch of them. Do you see how that's stupid positioning for me to go try and do that? Does that make sense? That's what I'm trying to help people understand and see. They're like, Stephen, go be the funnel guy. I'm like, no, that's dumb, <laughs> right? I'm not gonna be the funnel guy. There already is an amazing funnel guy. I'm not gonna be the same guy. That's stupid, right? I literally would be doing the, the exact, uh, like literally the exact definition of, of fighting for scraps. Plus, I, I'm not gonna try and be the funnel guy anyway, right? I'm, uh, anyway, I'm not gonna do that. So what I've been trying to do is figure out which category to go develop for me to step into. And I think I know what the answer is. And I'm not gonna just drop that here right now. I want you guys to experience it with me while I create it. And for those of you guys who are, have been in my world for a little bit and you've been a part of these different things that I'm doing, you're gonna start watching me actually build this thing out. And uh, it's what I've been doing. And uh, it's what's been going on behind the scenes. So the whole point of this, right? The whole point of this episode is I'm just trying to help you guys understand like, right, you gotta know, right? Sheer talent is actually not the thing that gets you get, like paid, right? Just like, you know, it, it's not, right? It can, it's also a long road. There's a lot of pros that come with it. A lot of like awesome, awesome pros that come with that, right? You can go and uh, you actually get, not just do you get freakishly good at the actual thing and people get to know you for that and you can charge money for it, right? There's, there's a lot of pros of becoming amazing and paid just because you're good, right? But that's not the reason why you continue to get paid. It's actually not the reason you get paid in general either, right? You can go get paid, the, the con, the con of trying to be the best at that thing, right? Is that it just takes for freaking ever, right? It takes a long time. I've been doing this game for, I think I figured out about five years now, specifically like this kind of thing, okay? Five years now. Um, the first thing I ever built on the internet was about five years ago, a little more than that. I don't think we had my first kid yet, so it was a little more than five years ago, right? And if you're like, man, Steven, I wanna go spend five years, that's great, then that's fine, you don't have to, right? Instead of being the best, be the first. That's what Seth Godin teaches and I absolutely love that. You can be the best or you can be the first, okay? Those are the only options. You can be the best or the first, right? And I, my, what I teach, teaches you how to do both. You actually can do both of them together, okay? But uh, what I realized is like, oh my gosh, I gotta position me a little bit more. So what I've been doing is positioning myself as the offer creation guy. Um, I just got another testimonial from a guy. I'm so excited about it. It was so cool. Uh, uh, um, guy reached out and he said, hey, I got your I got your product, super awesome, and I made $30,000 my first stage pitch. And I was like, what's up? Got another one last week, 
I think it was last week. Yeah, she wrote in and she goes, what's up? I sold over 50% of the room on my very first event. Thank you so much for that tactic and the, what you taught. That's why I did. I was like, what's up? <laughs> okay, it doesn't matter what you're selling. It doesn't matter the product. It doesn't matter if you're doing it from stage or if it's on an ebook. It doesn't matter if it's, right, if it's a physical thing, it's a supplement or for something that's like B2B or retail. It's the same principles throughout, okay? And it, it just really meant a lot to me. And it's, more and more, it's been like, oh my gosh, this is the place I gotta go. So that's the whole point of this episode, right? I'm trying to figure out how to position myself. And it's a moving, it's slightly moving target, right? I kind of know where it is and as I move it gets more clear if I sit back and I'm like right, exact same thing with anything in life if I sit back and I'm like well I just don't know what it is yet so I haven't moved yet nothing appears that way for me and so I've been actively over this whole year been been pursuing what that kind of is and it's become more and more and more clear more and more and more open I'm like holy crap this is it okay uh, I love the book um, innovators dilemma and there's a there's a there's a paragraph in there that is freaking awesome and he says, he basically says in there that suppliers and customers must discover new markets together. Okay, that's what I'm doing. That's why I haven't been like, that's it. Because I've been discovering what it is that people really need with the customer, which means I need to be with the customer, which means I need to be creating products and being with the customer, you know what I mean? So for those of you guys are coming out to the offer mine, which is in a few weeks here, that you're gonna watch me, That's that, that is what I'm doing, okay? I know exactly what I'm teaching. I know exactly what you guys need to hear, but I'm doing it, I'm trying to see how to deliver it in a way where I can see in your eyes, wow, right, that aha, oh my gosh, wow, right? <laughs> when I can get that feeling of, of like, what I just taught, you get like that honor feeling. Wow. Like, you know, regardless of what you think about whoever the president of the US is, or regardless of what you think about whatever this leader, or that leader, or that, or whatever, if they walked in the room, you'd still be like, whoa, that's so and so. Whoa, that's right. I need that emotion when you see what I'm teaching. And when I've got that emotion, when you see what I'm teaching, when I'm teaching, then I can put it in a book. Does that make sense? I know the concepts. Some people have asked me, like, Stephen, how come you've written a book on it yet? Because it's, I was like, it's not about just the concepts. I gotta make sure that you ingest them. I gotta make sure that the way I teach them, I gotta make sure the stories that I'm telling in order to like, like convey the concepts are actually good, right? That, there's, there's no other way for me to get good at knowing what those are without constantly teaching it. Just bam, teach it, teach it, teach it, teach it, teach it, right? Over and over and over. And I've become more and more clear as I've done so then it's good for a book. Because a lot of what I say, right? The lot of what I say comes across, right? With my body language. I don't have that luxury in a book, which means it needs to be ultra clear. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the reason why, right? So if you watch what I'm doing, OfferMind. What's the purpose of OfferMind? I'll let you answer that, okay? What's the purpose of, of things down below that, right? Right, that'll help me clear, clarify and figure out more of what's in the books, right? That'll help me clarify, right? And it's so interesting. There's a there's a book. Um, it's by technically it says Ryan Dice, but really it's Perry Belcher. Uh, it's a book called um, The Science of. <laughs> no, I'm thinking of the science of selling. I'm thinking of my group. <laughs> it's called uh, Secret Selling System. If you listen to the event that created the Secret Selling System, it it's it's insane. It, like the 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 depth that you get from the event is way more, right? I mean, it's like way more than, than, than you could. It's like when people go in, they're like, well, I watched the movie and then I went and I read the book and the book was way better. Well, the book's always gonna be better because your imagination gets to play. It's like the exact same thing when you are, right? See, right? The, the, the movie is just one person's interpretation of what's going on in the book. Exact same thing when a book gets, gets created from an event, right? Well, the way it was the way it was written was one person's interpretation of what happened at the event, right? You know what I mean? The amount of the times something gets translated, like, like purposes and, 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 and um, emotion, things get lost, right? And so what I'm doing, and, and the reason why I'm saying all this stuff to you guys, and I'll end this now, but um, if you guys read um, uh, this book, right? Uh, the 30 days book, right? You suddenly lose everything. What did you do to get it back from, uh, and from day one to 30? Um, what's fascinating about this is you will notice the patterns of creation that are actually shown inside this book, right? And if you go in and you start reading this thing, you'll notice there's a pattern of creation. There's a pattern in what to create when at what points. And that's what I've been doing is been trying to figure out how to develop what I'm doing in a, and where to position me, right? So that the positioning is what creates value, not just my talent. I want the talent to also. But it was that thing that I realized, right? And that's what Trey was telling me. That's what I realized when I was mowing the lawn. That's what I realized watching all these people at different masterminds years ago. I was like, huh, 
They're there because they positioned themselves in this place and then they got good. I was like, hmm, I am where I am because I got good and then I'm just trying to figure out where to position what I do, right? You need both. <laughs> Talent is not enough in anything. Talent is not enough. You still gotta position yourself, right? And so that's what I've been doing a lot and I just want you guys to be thinking about that. So anyway, hopefully it's helpful to you. Hopefully you like this episode. Um, it's, it's something really powerful to be thinking about. I want you guys to, to, to be purposeful about how you create where you're positioned, right? And that's really what I talk about uh, when I talk about market design or category design. It's the same thing. Um, Anyway, guys, thanks so much. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the episode today. If you guys liked it at all, please share it. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, the minutes on YouTube have been insane. The reviews on iTunes have been incredible. And I just thank you guys a lot. That really means a lot to me. It actually motivates me a lot. So anyways, I appreciate it a lot and uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Oh yeah. Hey, obviously a funnel's already dead if you can't even get anyone to opt in, right? So I spent four hours teaching an audience how to get high opt-ins, when they work, when they don't work. If you want access to that member's area, where you can watch those replays, just go to freeoptincourse.com to create your free member's account now.